That's what they just say. Riding down 17, how about say my ride there? So, kind of tell us like what kind of obstacles you face in the music industry coming out of South Carolina. Because I know South Carolina is, is, is not one of those states that some but people really made it big out and the ones that really made it out, they don't claim South Carolina. So, tell us like what really rock, you know what I'm saying, had to go through. Well, of course, you know, you're going to go through a whole lot of d disbelief. Uh, like I said, everybody didn't think this music shit was for real, for real. So they everybody slept on it. Yeah, I, had, I come from era, a era that I had to, they slept on this business. Until now, a lot of them waking up. Uh, on top of that, the people that didn't slept on the business, I didn't want to deal with you because they feel like, uh, like a person like me, I can't be ran over or taken advantage of. So. Not only that I'm country, I can't be ran and take advantage of them, so I need to find somebody that can, so I had to deal with that. I had to deal with, uh, of course, jealousy and envy. This obstacle is, man, that you can't even complain about. You know, I used to complain about that shit. Now, nah, like, I'm built for a tough for that shit. That shit don't even phase me. Not never fucking hate or phase me. Uh, it used to. Yeah. So tell us about 48 Camp. Kind of, you know, tell us like who's losing 48 and kind of tell us what it's about, the movement. Oh uh, man, 48 Camp. Uh, it, was, it was really created by this guy named Lamont Kennedy. And uh, I was a youngster, me and Little Ghetto. And uh, we was 48 Camp. Like, we was, we was trying to get into it. We was really not even, we was recording in the backyard, off the tape recorder, and we took the, to the guy Lamont Kennedy, the CEO, the used to be CEO, former CEO of Boy Camp. So they him hit a tape, he heard it, he was like, damn, y'all did this, how y'all did this? Tape recorder, all right, he put us in our first lab. And he put us in the first lab, that's when we were, we were about 14, maybe 13. Record off a dad player. A lot of people don't know what the fuck that is, a dad player, that's when you know you've been in the fucking lab a long time, uh, recording the dad player, man, and shit, uh, he loved it, and he ain't let off us yet, like, he ain't let off, I kept it pushing a little bit, I took it a little bit more serious than others, and he seen that, I took it a little bit more serious than others, and he was like, shit, bro, I'm about to do this with Andrew Stone and Sugar Hill Gang, here's 40 count. He gave me 40 count, he gave me that ball. I already had my crew, my motherfucking brothers, like Real G, LAG, you know what I mean? Doughboy, uh, Walk Dog, Soldier. I already had put together my team already. I had a team before I even gave me, given the 40 count. Because I was already prepared, I already knew what I was built for. So as soon as he did that, I was up uh, my motherfucking alley. And shh, he gave me the ball, shit, I ain't fumble yet. So kind of tell us like who you looked up, up to as an artist that you were coming, when you were coming out. What artist you looked up to? Locally or in Go ahead and drop both. Oh, she, uh, P, Master P inspired me a lot. Master P, uh, Tupac was first as far as my work ethic and loving the business. Then when I seen what P did with the P, made me want to be a CEO. Pop made me want to be a better artist, but P made me want to be a CEO. And people like Rose influenced me to keep going. If y'all can get that, if I ain't, if I ain't lost y'all on that. Yeah. Rose influenced me to keep going, influenced, kept influencing me, but Master P, Tupac, and uh, Rick Ross. Okay.